So there's no recovering those batteries. They're completely shot. Alyssa's getting another power lesson. <laughs> Alyssa's knowledge has really bloomed when it comes to electricity. It has, but I haven't been the primary one taking care of the battery banks, right. so although I get the gist of what's happening, yes. I'm still having a hard time with volts and watts and current right. and amp and how they all work together. And so Jesse said, have you ever touched a nine volt battery to your tongue? I said, no. He said, do you oh. want to try? I said, not really. <laughs> I think it's the easiest way to explain current. How many volts are in this battery? You know the answer. Nine. It's a nine volt battery, that's what we call it. This battery is rated at 250 milliamp hours or approximately a quarter of an amp at nine volts. If I try to explain current when you turn something on, it's hard to understand. But when you touch it to your tongue, it's very easy to understand what current is, right? This battery's dead. <laughs> you should totally do this. Really? Yeah. But you don't feel anything. Um, no, you'll feel it. It just feels like somebody's tingling your tongue. Okay, I'll do it. You guys have waited a long time to see Alyssa put a 9 volt battery to her you tongue. You don't have cooties, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> what? What's what do that? You, what do you mean there's just not much it. there? No. Just touch it. That was a good zing. It was not a good zing. It that was. battery's dead. I felt a zing. It's not in my well, imagination. But that's not a fully charged battery. If this was, oh. it would be like, uh, 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 uh. Anyway, that's current, right? <laughs> because your tongue and the moisture on your tongue completes the circuit. And so, believe it or not, we're actually discharging this battery as we stick it to our tongue. <laughs> and the little muscles in your tongue are going. While my goal isn't to become a solar installer, far from, I feel that kind of going in my mind to the end of the world and back with electricity, <laughs> I can then do simple things and I'm like, oh, so I, maybe I don't feel that I can just hack together a solar system, but I could do this task over here. One night we came home, this has been a while ago, and the heater wouldn't turn on. Anyway, it turned out to be that a tiny little wire that's hooked to the thermostat and it had just broken off, which, you know, removed the circuitry. And so I said, all you got to do is connect this wire to this little piece of metal and the heater comes on. And I'm like, what? Yes, That's, it's that easy. all I heard was heater comes on. That's all I heard. <laughs> yeah. But in that situation, if I wasn't around, uh, you know, getting that circuit together is very much inside your skill and ability. You just needed to know how electricity oh, yeah. works, right? So these little skills, I'm hoping that will help you to feel more confident. And I feel way more confident having played with solar. I hate to say that because I don't think we've played with solar. Maybe we have, I don't know, but we've lived with it. This has been our life and generators and all that stuff. I've learned so much about how all this stuff works. There's one other reason that it's good for both of us to be on board with, with how this stuff works. The reality about having your own power system is that it's actually quite dangerous. It really is. This stuff is not just like, oh yeah, Alyssa probably ought to know how solar works. Like if this catches fire or something were to happen to our house or wood stove or who knows what, you need to know how to turn all this stuff off, how to disconnect everything, right? The reality is that we have our own power station here. Like we have a power center. <laughs> so in, it comes with In my mind, right? I know the three little switches to toggle to turn yep. it off, but I'm not content with that. To me, just like press that button doesn't mean you understand your system. <laughs> right. And I don't know that that's safe. Exactly. Maybe two weeks ago or a little longer, we had an issue. Our bats weren't charging and it had, really hadn't been that long since we'd serviced them. And it was on my list to come out and check them. And did we it, did. I think I added water. I was going to add water. Yep. And I'm like, Jesse, we need more water. Yep. And you're like, what? So, How much did you add? I said a gallon. You're like, what the heck? Yeah, that's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. So then we had to go to town <laughs> to get some distilled water, which we did. We bought two gallons. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll just keep some on hand. And we came home and I believe the back battery back there took over a gallon, which told me she's done. That battery is shot. I don't know what happened, must have lost, I don't know. So we topped them all off and thought, well, we'll give it a week and see if it, if it can somehow recover. Odds are zero, it's probably done. And then what, two nights ago, batteries were dead, ran the generator, middle of the night, battery bank shut off. And then last night, battery bank shut off, but we've been out of town dealing with other stuff. So here we are. So it's time to remove these batteries from the battery bank. Um, it's what's happening is the two batteries on the end are shot. 
actually I think the back one is shot and it's really dragging down the one next to it. And because our, our bank is 12 volts, we can't have five batteries. We have to have multiples of two. So we're gonna have to remove the leading two. The good news <laughs> is the back four seem to be doing fine. They're not really using that much water. They're really, they're doing pretty good. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so we've lost four now of the eight batteries that we started off with, right? I feel like this is like a childhood song. Like yeah. there were six in the bed and the little one said, so they all rolled over and one fell uh, off. Um, that's what happened. We had eight batteries, two we lost last winter. If you haven't seen the video where we talked about getting this battery bank used, we thought if we can get roughly two years out of this battery bank, that would accomplish two goals. One, we could get started on our property and we would have electricity so that we could do work. And two, it would give us a chance to try living with solar to see, is it something we wanna do long-term? These batteries were used when we bought them. We do not know their history. So that was a total gamble. Here we are two years later, but we got a smoking deal on the battery. So if this would have happened to us with a multi-thousand dollar battery bank, I would be livid. We actually called and got a quote on this battery bank and it was a little over 3,500 bucks without sales tax. If these batteries were four grand and they're freezing, I would be absolutely hornet mad. Thankfully, they didn't and they're not, and so it's not such a big deal. We're not crying if we're losing a couple of batteries here and there. So what steps do you think you need to go through to remove the two outer batteries? This needs to come off. This needs to come off. This yep. will go there. This needs to come off and these will go there. So the most important part of working around the battery bank is that you not let a wrench crossover between a positive and a negative terminal on the same battery. Remember when you caught me setting a wrench down like on the car battery? Oh, yeah. sure some of you folks are wondering why we don't just open the lid on the battery bank all the way. Well, we built it to do that, but unfortunately when we sighted the pallet that we're using to hold the batteries, we put it too close to the cabin. So when we lift the roof, it actually hits the cabin and we would risk damaging the lid. So unfortunately, great design, poor execution. So I think we're ready to take these out now. Yeah, basically the power from these four batteries is entering this battery over here, especially, and heating it up. It appears that the plates inside have shorted out. And so now basically we have four batteries warming one battery, which is why our batteries are dead. Does not matter how much you charge them. As uh -huh. soon as you take it off the charger, these four just start discharging into that one battery, heating that one battery up. So that's part of why we need to get them out of there. So there's no recovering those batteries. They're okay. completely shot but that's also why these four are discharging and also why we can't charge them. Okay, how are you doing? Good. Are you ready for it to swing? Yep, one, two, three. Oh, Good. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. So typically with your heaviest load, you uh -huh. want it to be touching the terminal. Right. So you want to put the inverter all the way against Which the terminal. Which is what I did. That's not the inverter. That's oh. something else. Battery box is looking a little lean. It's like got empty nest syndrome. It's like yeah, all it the is. kids just moved out, went off to college. Yep. Think you got it? I think so. Okay. This looks good. Negative there, negative there. Do there. I graduate from preschool to first grade? Pretty good. Looks good. So we've talked about moving these panels and I was gonna do it last fall, actually late, well, <laughs> so after the workshop, we had to move all these panels because of the workshop for parking. So they were disconnected for the better part of a couple of weeks. Finally got them hooked back up because my thinking was any power is better than no power. But we also had a lot of stuff going on around the property. There's nowhere 
convenient to put them. So here they've sat kind of in the shade of the cabin and not really getting much power most of the winter. But the fact of the matter is, we haven't had any sun to mount to anything for almost three months. So what's the point in moving them? Well, I did spend the money to get more cable because I was thinking we might move them around the front. And in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't because they would have been in the way of plowing and they wouldn't have produced any more power. So we kind of just talked about some spots coming into spring in the next few months as we start to move around, start working on the house again. Where can we put these things? So that they're getting more sun, they're out of the shadow of the cabin as the sun starts to move up in the sky. You know, where can we put them that's going to work out good? And we've kind of identified the garden over here as a really great place. Um, we've just put our sewer line in over there, so we're not going to be driving over there. We're not going to be putting anything on top of that sewer line other than just dirt, maybe landscaping. As the days do get longer, our solar gain is going to go up. Even though we're working on tying into the grid, we don't know that we're going to go through all the effort of putting power into the cabin. It seems kind of silly. We're really trying to focus on getting the house done. So for now, this may continue to be the only power source for the RV in the cabin. And once we get into the house, you know, we'll have grid, hopefully we'll have grid power over there and we can kind of retire this system or hook it up and do something else with it. Now for the hard part, which is to get that cable over here and get everything hooked up. That's because you have to jockey panels. But did you tell them how your worst nightmare happened this morning? When it we did. Got up? The heater didn't come on. Oh yeah, I hate when that happens. Oh. It was so cold you could see your breath. I know a lot of people out there know how special Alyssa is, but I will tell you how special Alyssa is. Alyssa will take on power backhoes, home building, that makes Alyssa <laughs> special. But if there's no heat... You ain't oh, getting this girl to do nothing. Sorry, love. <laughs> things have been canceled today. All things have been canceled. So we have to start with heat. So what did I do? I did this. And that's how you get your wife to help you with solar. <laughs> kind of smells like a restroom, like those little hockey pucks they put in men's urinals yeah do you want to smell right that's that's weird it kind of smells like an outhouse a little bit that's what i mean it kind it of does smells smell like, those, like for most people who are doing stuff like this it's not such a big deal but when you buy solar cable for your panels you really want the shortest length of cable possible right so in this case i really didn't know where we were going to put the panels it was kind of a dice roll so i didn't want 75 feet of cable but i also didn't want 25 feet of cable so in the end i think i bought 35 which is probably enough but the point is you can't just go out willy-nilly and stick wire to your panels because the longer the wire the more power you're losing to resistance so these are y harnesses which allow us to hook two sets of panels, which are hook, uh, wired in series. It allows us to wire them into parallel or in parallel. So these are two Y harnesses. So now we can hook up all four panels like this, two negatives, two positives or something like that. So that's it for moving the panels. We'll do some cleanup on these wires, right? We'll get them tidied up. I think we're ready to turn the solar system back on. Woohoo! And then probably run the generator. Way to dominate solar today. Nice work. In the cold. <laughs>